Hello, welcome to Cosmic Love Connections with your host, Judy Jewett, and your co-host, Kathleen Lanigan. How are you today, Catherine? I am wonderful. I'm having a great day, and I'm always really happy and having fun when you and I get to converse. Because I know our problem is, is that the shows are too short, and we have too much to say, and we like to gab. And, <laughs> and so much comes out when we're just compare, you know, comparing things. And we should we should just record, you know, everything. <laughs> yeah, we yes. Probably so, which we've done that before. We've had we have done a lot that of before. candid shows yeah. Yeah. before. Yeah, the talk about it. So today's yeah. show is it's all all of our shows are about love. That's and right. Today we're talking about love and the creator. Love right. and connecting deeper with the creator within. And what's that and what is that like? And how do you do it? Right. Some people do it. I mean, everyone has their own way, but I, I, this is a message that I'm going to say now. And I'm going to say at the end that we are so powerful. Yes. We, Thank you. We are pure love. That spark is pure love. The spark, so, the soul is non-dual. It doesn't have any any pain and suffering that's right it is a direct right. connection to the universal creator it that's has right. direct connection to our angels our spirit guides to to anything and everything that is love right that's right so that's let's right. begin with that to remind people about the power that we are right and yeah. that love with the creator, that that's it. So Catherine, go ahead. What would you like to share? <laughs> <laughs> Try, I'm thinking of like six different topics. And the first one that comes up is, you know, right now, I, I want to keep bringing everything back to what's going on right now, because that's what everybody is. So everything, I, you know, when I get somebody coming in and they want to have a session and they're saying, everything is so heavy. I feel so heavy. There's it's, you know, and, and, and just saying, well, you're not feeling the love. That's not going to do it for them. Okay. No. They're, they're feeling what they're feeling is all of this energy that is, um, out there that is all full of fear and hatred and anger and angst and all of that kind of thing that's being constantly fed to us all the time just over and over and over but whatever media form you've got you can't even look at at your your you know your messages on your cell phone without there being something somebody's got some kind of little headline that puts you right into that fear thing oh you know now there's going to be another earthquake or there's going to be this and it takes you out of that part where you're feeling your own your own love spark that's in you and that's one of the things that we're always um trying to to impress upon people is that we have been dumbed down, humanity as a whole, worldwide, this whole planet, we have been dumbed down for so long by so many different mess propagandas, mediums, messages, television, movies, books, you name it, anything that you can put your hands on. It's not just the fault of social media, it's the fault of every cartoon that I listened to and saw when I was a little kid. We were being dumbed down even then. And so to try and think, I have a lot of power, the average person is going, well, I don't have any power. What can I do? I can't stop this. I can't do anything. You know, they have all the power or they, you know, the government has all the power. The government can do this or the, or the church can do this or my organization can do this or my neighborhood watch says I ha I can do this, you know, and it's, it's, it's almost impossible for people to say, when you said you have to realize that you have power, you know, there's a place in the Bible where it says that man created by God has more power than the angels. It actually says that in the Bible. 
And I've always, you know, because I write books about angels and I talk to the angels all the time. And, and I, many, many times I get messages that are like, well, you know, this, you know, this, you just forgot this. This is something that you forgot. And when I went over to uh, Egypt last month and I was seeing all these temples that were built by human beings, you know, I don't care what everybody says, you know, there's still some human work that went in to make it all that happen. We have, we, when you see, when you go to Europe and you see the beautiful churches that were built by human beings and you see the, you see the Sistine Chapel where Michelangelo painted all of those pictures and, and Raphael did all those depictions of the saints and the, and the angels and how magnificent that work was. We forget in our Ikea little houses that are one little ticky tacky box after another that now all the walls are white or gray and everything's, uh, where's the color? You know, everybody, all the designers took the color out, you know, 20 years ago in the middle of the eighties, we were all about color. Everybody was wearing color. We had to have color in our houses and now but nobody's got color. You know, nature's got lots of color. That's part of our spark. That's part of our divineness is having all of those. That's our power. Our power is so important for us as human beings to realize that we have power and that that divine spark that's in us was is that part where that is God within us. That is the universal love. That is the creator. And to, and to just say to yourself, well, I want to go... Uh, I want to think about now, what does that spark mean to me? Like when I think about, when I think about God loving me, how do I feel? Do I have a smile on my face or a frown? Usually for most people, it's going to be a smile. People go to church so they can sing a pretty song or a lovely song to God and they smile. They leave the church and they're smiling, right? Because they've had that, they've gotten that, that pump. Huh, that feeling of that they are connected. That's one of the things that that when we came to this earth, we were disconnected. And we try, we should be trying very hard to get our connection back. That's what meditation is about. That's what prayer is about. That's what um enjoying na nature and you know, just going for a walk, or you know, I, I gotta tell you, as I talk to my trees and my flowers, can't help it, always did, always have, always will. And you know, the flowers that are blooming, I talk to them in French. So <laughs> <laughs> or I play my French songs on the on the on the radio on the um on the um music outside the house so that they can hear all the French songs. <laughs> I know, and it's not that I don't love animals because we have animals all over the house, and I used to have ten golden retrievers, so I don't want somebody saying, "Oh, well, you need a dog." I did the dog thing, so there you go. But wait, all wait, of that. Wait, 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 wait. How many dogs yeah. did you have at one time? Ten. No, it did was yeah. Yeah, I had the Are mom you and the an dad. Brain person or what? <laughs> I know. I was like, oh, let's just do that. <laughs> yeah, I had, I had the puppies. I had the mom and the dad, and then all the children, and then I kept one of the children. So I had three, mom and dad, and junior, and then, uh, and then after a while, then uh, we had chosen friends who were, um, we did, we had a list of over fifty something people that wanted one of those puppies. Wow. Because they were because the daddy Beauregard was a um, had won the medal for first in show and hunt for Canada and the United States. He was incredibly gorgeous and unbelievably intelligent, and he was not a dog. I mean, I was telepathic with this dog and I put him in so many books. I can't tell you. And I've got, he's in my magical midnight, you know, Bo is in my magical midnight. He's telepathic with the angel. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we got off there, but I mean, you get it. You know, you should, you, when you have all those wonderful things, your puppy and your cat and, and your nature, and those are all parts of God spark. And it sparks something in you right. to make you, when you feel that love, then you have that love coming out. You know, or your new baby that you have, or your new, you, you know, hopefully a new neighbor that just moved in and you really like them. That's, that's another. You know, it, it really is. You're, you're saying it. I, I'll have to tell you. So I had a dog. So, okay. 
I have to go back to the dog story about love. Okay, let's go back to the dog story. So growing <laughs> up, we had we had dogs, but I never was an attached to a dog. And even later on, when I had kids, my mother and dad always had dogs, but I just it just wasn't I don't know it just wasn't my thing. And uh -huh. I had um, my daughter had a dog. One of my daughters had a dog at the time, and the dog came to me and gave me a message. And she says, you don't like me because I'm not small. Cause I remember saying, well, someday I'll get a dog and I'll get a little lap dog. Right. Yeah. And so I thought, Oh no. And so I fell in love with Annie. She was a mutt. She had some Husky and, um, not, she wasn't primarily Husky, but she had, I can't think of the other breeds, but she had, she had other breeds in her. And yeah. so, but what happened that during that time I had, I had visions of being shown that I had a lifetime where I was killed by Doberman dogs, like the 1300. Oh yeah. So it came up for me to heal this lifetime. And that's why I didn't like dogs. And wow. so when I healed it, cause it, what it did, it appeared like when I was broken into when I was living in the city of Columbus and Clintonville, that it was contributed to when you, I was killed. It was a complete frozen and fear of agony. And oh, then yeah. I was broken into like, we never know when something happens, how it's really related to all these other things. That's correct. So then it was related to when I, um, my neighbor was broken into, but I didn't know like their copper, the house was empty and their copper piping was being taken out. And I didn't know that. I just saw a light in there and uh -huh. I had gone to the restroom and I'm looking and I'm thinking, well, that's kind of weird. And I'm very psychic, very intuitive. And I had no discernment. I just turned my head and that, oh, well, maybe a realtor was there today and left the light on. Well, ah. and I found out what happened. Then months later, during the same year, I was broken into. And so the reason oh, wow. I turned to my head and didn't have discernment is because of the fear. We never know how one right. thing that happened to us 500 years ago right, <laughs> is affecting us to this day. And That's it true. appears different ways. Right. And so I was one that I would turn my head without discernment mm -hmm. when I saw something happen. It wasn't yeah. just that, that I would never call the police. I was not going to do that. Mm -hmm. I was not in my empowerment to do those kind of things. So from that moment on, I had my voice. And I didn't fart around. If I thought there was something going on, I had yeah. no fear about calling. Now I yeah. realize I'm going off on a whole story, but it has <laughs> to do with love and discernment. discernment. Love and, prayer, and we're going to talk about discernment. So right. we know that when you're not discerned, there's usually a reason. And it's going to go back to an earlier time. It could have happened a thousand years ago, right? Thousands Absolutely. or thousands or 50,000 years ago, it could have been on another planet. It could, it doesn't necessarily have to be on this planet. So that's what I am learning now. Um, also, when you're talking about discernment is um, that when you have choice, you know, let's, uh, and I want to talk about this when you're in a situation where it is a toxic situation, let's say it's a, a co-worker. Um, I can remember when my sister-in-law was in li alive, she had a lot of problems with really toxic co-workers, you know, that just, you know, I was like, you know, can't you get another job, you know, or go someplace else? Because they, it, it was always when she would call, uh, we'd be on the phone for an hour and a half while she told me this whole story about these things that they said to her and these things that they did. And I'm, you know, and she was, she was a, a industrial graphic design, um, a building designer. I mean, she was really intelligent and creative. And I mean, she did all kinds of stuff. She was an amazing person. And 
But I would say to her, you know, you need to go up to these people and just say, you know, what you just said and what you did, you know, the, I, it really hurt my feelings or, you know, I don't like that. I don't like that behavior. You know, please don't do that around me again, or please don't be, um, um, I'm not, I shouldn't be the pin cushion to your pins, you know, that kind of thing. And go, go say something. And I mean, eventually she, she did, but she, but she, she had a hard time, literally had a hard time understanding that, Okay, this is a toxic person and this one is not a toxic person. She had she had literally had no discernment of what was good for her. You have to be able to call on that divine spark and say, "All right, I want loving things to come to me, loving people to come to me, loving situations, a loving home so that I am constantly in that place of love." And it is you you know, we are given free will and you have to make that, it's a choice. You have to make that choice of, you have to, but in order to make the choice, you have to see what the choice is. Do you know what I'm saying? So the discernment comes in when you see, or when you see something bad, like you saw um, a place being broken into. But also these days when we, we see a parent being, horrible to a child or, you know, that kind of thing going on. And we don't do anything because we're, the next thing we know is we're the ones that go to jail. You know, there's that kind of situation. But there's also, I and I'm going to tell my little story here. I was working in my brother-in-law's uh, dental office. And because we were in that dental office, we would see children that came in and we could tell by their teeth that they were not being taken care of right? Because they were rotted. They'd be two years old and all their teeth are rotted out. Mm. Well, that means that they're not being yeah. either fed or they're being fed the wrong thing, or they're still on a bottle. They shouldn't be that kind of thing because they, and no one was taking care of them. Well, you can call youth services and the same thing for the elderly. We saw, we saw elderly people that were being abused by their children who were not taking care of them. I can remember one day, literally, I called adult ser uh, services, the adult services, which are for elderly people. And we had a gentleman who came to our office because it was the only place that he knew where he was safe. He said that. The only place that he knew he was safe was at our dental office because he knew we would protect him. So we called the services and... Um, I had to call his son who was in um, Indianapolis. The man had finally developed um, uh, Alzheimer's, you know, and, and didn't know where he was. He, he was just driving around. He, did, he didn't recognize the town, He didn't, re but he recognized the dental office. So he came to the dental office and I called the son and the son said, well, you know, I have a day here. I can't be driving all the way. It was, it's two and a half hours up to our town from Indianapolis. And he said, I can't be driving up there, you know, just to take care, you know, just um, um, tell him to go home. And I said, well, he doesn't know where his home is. I mean, we knew what the address was. And I said, if you're not going to come and and come get your father and take care of your father, take him home and uh, provide some kind of, you know, a, visiting angels or find an assisted living for him or some kind of medical care, then we have to call adult protective services. Do you know what he said? You do whatever you want to do. I can't be bothered. Now that is what I call a, a toxic situation, right? But we had the discernment that this was a situation where the good was not being done. This is another fellow human being, you know, yeah, he had um, Alzheimer's, but the ser the services came in and they and they found you know they he they put it found him you know got him a place to live you know so that he was not at home he he was obviously his his clothes were filthy he had not eaten you know I mean it was the classic case but he just drove to our office because he knew where that place was. Wow. Yeah, so discernment. there is a lot of that kind of thing going on. And that's what discernment is, is it, to do nothing. That is not the right thing to help another human being. That is the right thing to do. And that takes a lot of love 
to do it and it takes a lot of courage to do it and but this is this is what these times are right now that's why these situations are coming in is to see to test us to, to make test, a, yes. to give us that choice to yes. give yes. you the choice what are you going to do to to help humanity are you going to help today and i mean here's another discernment are you going to help today and are you going to sit down and watch the another cubs game on the on the television, or are you going to meditate and try and make the world a better place by sending light and love to all the places that need it, to the war zones? There's a lot of people at war in this earth. Yeah, you 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 can't you can't send them money. You can't walk over there with a the gun. You can't do anything, but you can meditate and you can send them light and love. You can pray for them, and that's a choice. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is a choice. It really is. So let's let's even go deeper in discernment. I think we're just okay. touching the surface of ways that people may see, you know, that they can relate to, but we, we want to go deeper. And um, one level of discernment, if you're a light worker or you're taught, maybe mm -hmm. you are not a light worker and you are um, another, you know, light workers, not, it's not religion. It's, but you're, you're very religious and in your religion, it says you're not to judge, right? Yeah. And so right. the thing is with light workers, we're taught to accept other people. Well, what happens, we don't have discernment. Now remember Correct. discernment is when you are connected to your spark, your higher self, and That's you right. intuitively are being shown or told what to do that's now, what exactly what i'm talking about examples right mm -hmm. and part mm -hmm. of it feels very humany which is fine but the truth is when you're living in discernment it is a gift of your genetic coding it literally is part of the gene code the gene keys it is part yeah. of the I Ching. it is a, a exact um genetic code and then what you do, it's a gift. It's not that everybody has discernment. So we're right. giving you examples. I've told you about trauma that happened probably 500 years ago that caused me to be turned off. I didn't have discernment. I kind of turned my head. A lot of people do that. Then you gave an example of discernment and things happening to people at work and in mm -hmm. life. And at the dentist office, you know, write different things. Now we're right. going to go deeper in discernment. We already know that light workers are taught to be this way or be that way. But that still discernment is a genetic code. It is a gift. And, right. and you can be the most psychic person in the world and not be to have discernment. That is correct. And discernment. Very correct. Right. You have to step back in human living. We all live there and you're going to have to go within because discernment is connected to intuition. Yes, it is. Hugely. So, hugely. Yeah. It's connected yeah. to that. So if you're all excited and someone, let's, here's an example. You're told like, oh, you got to meet X, Y, Z. And I want you to meet them and they're all over, you know, like they're very big in the, let's say the wee wee world or in the empowerment world. And you're already sold on this person, but you don't know them. You have to have discernment. So right. whether you get a spiritual message, wait a second, don't choose that. And you ignore it, right? Or right. you ask the questions to why, right? And you right. make these decisions. You have to be, you have to, I mean, you are in control of your life and everything yeah. that has happened to you, you've contributed to it. Right. You're not a victim. Wake up. So to have discernment is to be able to step back and say, right. okay, why am I a little bit, this isn't feeling 100%. What is the real issue? Right. And you're going to be shown that. So you have to pay attention 
to what your reaction is, right? Mm -hmm. You have discernment and you're not to say yes to everybody. Just because you're a healer, just because you're kind and you want to help humanity, you have to have discernment. You have That's to right. step back and sometimes say no and hell no. <laughs> well, that sounds non-love, but actually there's some love in there. Sure there is. And there's one that's called tough love. So, you know, that's part of it too. You have, you have to in discernment. And I have turned right. my head many times because I thought this person was a medical intuitive and they could connect and they were so psychic and I wasn't seeing what was really behind it. And it was yeah. friends that pointed it out to me and they saw it. I just love and accepted that person. But even though that's wonderful, you still have to have discernment right. to make sure if you're seeing the whole picture and that's correct true. and that doesn't mean you judge that means you're having discernment to say wait a second this isn't feeling right correct very true that's it and i know you've had many situations too what we are shaking our head like yeah <laughs> so oh yeah yeah so yeah. if you would please go another example of discernment with the spark. If you have any other examples or anything that comes to you, well, mind. the um, one one of them, like you you touched on, is like especially for people that are light workers and and um, spiritual people, they do have a tendency to just accept absolutely everything and. Um, I think those that are under the religious umbrella, they accept everything that that particular church says or that mosque or that, you know, the whatever that religion is without having discernment of, well, is this right for me? Is that, are they, is the, is, does this, sometimes you can say, does it even make sense? But if it doesn't make sense, then use your discernment to say, okay, it doesn't make sense. And how can that be right for me or anybody else? And make these decisions. And then, you know, you don't have to, you know, leave the whole church, but you certainly, that's what picking and choosing is all about, you know, it especially, is. especially now when you've got so many people coming in and saying, that guy's wrong and I'm right. That guy's wrong and I'm right. You know, and that's what we hear all the time. It's right and wrong and right and wrong. And we, you know, 20 years ago, we always said there is no right and there is no wrong. There's no black. There's no white. It's all gray. Yes, we do. I never hear that anymore. Isn't that interesting? Right. I never hear that anymore. Yeah. Everything's so polarized. It, uh, like what happened? You know, where it used to be, well, like, you know, Situation ethics was a class I took in the 1960s, and that's what it was all about, was discernment. Um, it was, a, it exactly, it was about discernment. Um, so I have a TV, a monitor here. Not a TV, duh, it's a computer. Computer. It's, my computer is built into my monitor. So I have my computer, I don't have a TV in my office. And then I have, I'm on my laptop. And sometimes... The computer, the large computer will come on. It's it's an HP, it's a touch screen. And um, because I'm on YouTube a lot, right? And right. so that's what I'm doing. And all of a sudden I see about a heading about the third world war is right here, another step towards it. See, this is what I'm saying is Bless their hearts, human beings. I don't care where they are. And even when we were in Egypt, you know, there's no TVs you know, around. We're, we're in temples. and But everyone is walking around with either an iPad or a phone. And there's still enough Wi-Fi for everybody to get. Did you hear that, you know, um, such and such happened and such and such? And we're just like, we came to the other side of the earth. So we don't have to hear this stuff that's still being brought into the mix, you know, and it, it just, that's why I call it fear porn. Yeah. It, you know, it is. And even there are shows, even spiritual shows that they're doing predictions. 
and there's still it depend. It's just there are there are a lot of religious shows that are out there like these are the end days and the world is going to end and you know it's all going to burn up and we're going to have this and we're going to have that. Well, you know what? That's the whole point of the timeline thing. Is the, what we just talked about on last week on the last show is. Keep those thoughts positive. Build that timeline. What do you want in your new earth? Do you want to have a, you know, a, a nice home? Do you want to have friendly people? Do you want to have love in your life? Do you want to have all those 10 golden retrievers back? <laughs> See, what do you want? You know, There's nothing wrong with what you want. To make them love, joy, peace, happiness, things that make you happy. Do you want world travel? That's great. You know, I want to go to places where everybody is happy. You know, I want to have bigger dinner parties. I, you know, and it, that's what it would be. But then you got World War Three is on its way. And no, it's and you not. have all these psychics predicting. You have these other shows predicting. We've got an election this year. So the energy is like we're so divided, right? It and is. we're getting to the real truth of all of this. And it's all awakening and waking up yeah. and, and being more centered within. And that's what present. that's what we always say is, you know, stay centered, stay right here on this neutral place, you know, not on the negative over here. And then when, when you do that, just even with your breath, like we've talked about on previous shows, you know, just take that deep breath. You don't have to meditate for an hour all, all day long or two hours. Just take that deep breath and for five minutes and then just think of the positive things that you want to have in your life. You want to have love? That's great. You want to have more money? Well, then you're a better job. You deserve all that. A lot of people don't even think they deserve it. Of course you deserve a good job. Of course you deserve to be paid what you're really worth. Of course you are. You have people who listen to what you have to say. Of course you should have 10 golden retrievers. <laughs> of course you can have whatever of you, course. Want. you can <laughs> right. have whatever you want. So <clears throat> remember what's really happening is we are about unity. We are about community. Community. We are about the spirit of, I'm going to say greed, is going away. It's deactivated. Yes. So, because we're in the higher frequency. So, if we go to non love, non love does not exist. Make it not exist by staying yeah. positive. Positive. Um, and I challenge everyone, and, and this would be a challenge for me, I know. Um, I know that Richard Grudd does this with the Gene Keys. The monks do this. The Buddhists do this. Chimes go off every hour and you mm -hmm. stop and you just stop and breathe. And yeah, you breathe just centered said. yourself. Yeah. And that would be a mindfulness thing to do. So what I, I really encourage you to do, and obviously, unless you're in a meeting, is to literally maybe on your phone, set it for 55 minutes if you're working for 50 my yeah. minutes stop so Catherine, i am going to challenge you while you're writing and oh and no that was one yeah while you're writing <laughs> while you're writing i know and when yeah. you are editing and i'm going to yeah. do this and we all can do this together and just stop yes, every can. 55 minutes even if you can do it for three minutes so then so then the thing is well what do you do if you're driving and the alarm goes off well, that means you shut the radio off and you're driving and you just, you don't have to close your, your eyes. Mind. You know, we've always, everybody thinks that you have to close your eyes. You don't have to close your eyes. You can do it, you know, uh, and, and just stop and breathe for those moments and just, you know, just feel the creator's love come on, you know, coming in and going into your heart and just, and then, then you allow that same love to go and radiate out to the rest of humanity. You do. And, and it does only take three minutes, really. It really does. It's and not that, it's not, once you, once you do it once, you know how to do it. Yeah. So do that and then pay attention to stepping back when you have to make a decision. Being yes. that I'm a projector, my energy isn't supposed to make, I'll say, oh yeah, that sounds great. But nine out of 10 times I come back the next day for that spiritual guidance. And it's like, no, you know, it's like, oh yeah, I thought <laughs> I was going to do that, but no, I'm told not to. I yeah. want to do it, but no. And then I listen to my guidance. 
Because if you don't, you get knocked down. And I don't want to- This is true. Yeah. You have to listen. So maybe not make decisions quite as, as quickly. And it's also about trusting yourself, right? So you can't sit on the sidelines and not live life. You have to, but you have to go with yeah. it and that's right to that difference. So yep. if you all, I mean, please do that. And one more thing I want to bring up, as I said, I would do it last show is what's happening on the planet right now. The ones that have done their work. And if you haven't done your work and you know, you're not as elevated as you want, then I'm going mm-hmm. to encourage you you know, Catherine and I can help you. This is what we do. We're, we, we're in the higher energies and we would love to help you um, to go in deep and release, right? Whatever needs to be released. But right. the other thing you're going to have, let's say you've done that, that now what's showing up are imprints mm-hmm. and look at your eyes being open and how many pictures are you taking, right? Of, right. of how many things are going on. Look at imprints that way. So you've healed the trauma but the imprint, you want to know why am I still creating this pain and suffering? It, it's not from the wound that you heal. That's gone. It's the imprints. It's so the- now we need to get rid of, so now we just need to erase those imprints and we just erase them that easily. Erase them. Okay. Yes. Yes. And I know, yes. And I am absolutely conscious of with he- real healing method, it clears up so much of the trauma and the wounds and stuff. So now I'm asking, okay, I'm ready actually to try it with someone um, to erase imprint imprints to see how many we can wipe in an area. I, I, I'm anxious to do that because I've been talking about it now for a week, like, oh my God, this is what's going on. And, and, and it's, it's it, you know, it's interesting because once you see it, and you're aware of it. It's like anything. You're aware of it. It's easy to get rid of because you can you can erase them. You can visually. Actually. You can. You can. You know what? You just gave me a technique. I used to teach kids, tutor kids, and the ones that had trouble with spelling, and I I have trouble with spelling. Thank God for spell junk. So, but what I would do for spelling tests, so kids don't spell or adults do not, are not good spellers because they're not able to see the words. Mm-hmm. You see all your, all, everything you wrote, you see, you see it, you see it all. I you see, I see all of it. All. And so yeah. what you have to do is go into your magic chalkboard, which is using your third eye and imagine it. And if you can take it there and then, then close your eyes and do it again and take it to the eye. All of a sudden, you'll know how to spell the word. You can learn anything with your magic chalk. I call it the magic board, right? Yeah. So I have a feeling you can go in and see all these imprints and go. You just erase them. Erase yeah. Them. Yeah. And if you need and want to really, really get rid of them, use a, a wet rag and some Dawn liquid and you can really wash them away. Okay. I love that. Oh my God. Yeah. Yes. And the other the thing. More, was- the more, one of the things that I got taught, that I was taught during neuro linguistics when I had cancer was the more you detail you can put into the visualization that you're doing to eliminate, let's say the inference is yes. And now I have, I have a really good sponge. It's a really nice sponge and I've got warm water and I've got Dawn liquid and I can just splash it all over my chalkboard and my chalkboard. And then I get a hair dryer and I dry it off really, really fast. And it's all nice and clean and ready for the next one. Yeah. What you do, then you stop and you feel in your body if they're still there. And if they're still there, you may have, you may have a pattern. It may be a repeated mm-hmm. pattern that you're right. doing. And you could mm-hmm. also have, if you still have some trauma or something that hasn't cleared, you're going to feel it in your body. Yeah. True. Okay. It is time. All to right. Go. Uh, and we'll see everybody next week. And this show, obviously, is Friday. And um, we are pre recording it. So I will say this show is actually being shown on July 5th. All right. All right. With that, that's namaste. a that's a good thing. It's a free freedom. The day after freedom. It's, it's namaste. Day after freedom. Namaste.